Hello, welcome to Running Shorts. This is a new podcast by Accelerate with Stu Hale and myself, Harvey Martin. Uh, we're going to chat about a lot of things running, some of the things in the shop and the team that we support. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy. Over to Stu to just explain the shop a little bit. Um, yeah, if you've not visited us before, we're kind of, um, I suppose what we're trying to be is a little bit of a one-stop shop. Um, we have not just a running store, um, where we have obviously specialist um, and technical running kit gear, um, ranging from wits um, to racing shoes through to basically everyday well-cushioned training shoes that we all like to enjoy wearing. Um, second part of what we do is very much around the um, Accelerate Physio and Coaching Center. We have podiatry, physio, um, exercise and soft tissue therapy, strength conditioning, we can help people with mobilization, right the way through to full coaching programs um, with regular time with your coach as opposed to everything online. Um, and one-to-one -one sessions that include things like running technique. Um, so we do all sorts of things and I keep saying, because um, it's our first podcast and I'm a bit nervous about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you're doing, you're doing great. Well, honestly. that's all right then, thank you. Um, but on to the fun stuff, which is the team and the community, which is where all the fun happens. Yeah, it's good that, isn't it? Yeah, so that's... we've got a nice community, lots of lead runs, groups. Yeah, um, we've got Woodrun, um, which is actually Thursday mornings down at Eckersall Woods, uh, which is led by uh, the ever famous Leanne, um, backed up superbly, I hear, with Hazel, um, Richard and Christine. And that's very much about how you can develop your running, particularly through technique, utilising drills um, and so on. Um, and it's something that's the first one we actually set up, you know, back, was in, it? back in, back in. A long we'll, time we'll ago. Not say how young I was then. That's no, long time. Yeah, yeah. You might still been at school. I don't know. Well. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Um, so yeah, that was a long time mm. ago. That that was a crazy idea Deb's had with uh, a guy called John down at Ecky, Ecky Woods, who looks after all of that side of things for the council, and that's kind of. Yeah, it's going really strong. Mm. They get plenty of people along, and all we hear is just positive thoughts. Haven't been down for a while, actually, but we're planning on bobbing yeah. down. If you've not, go check it out. It's good fun. Yeah, if you've got good, a Thursday actually. morning off, yeah, and they always good. finish with coffee, which if you've not and had Ecky Wood coffee, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's and worth cake. Trying. Um, and yeah, then you've got... And cake. And cake. And then you've got ATR. Don't forget the cake. And, and cake. <laughs> and then you've got ATR on a Tuesday and Thursday, um, which is yep. led by Debs. And Graham. And Graham. Yep. Um, and they're just really nice groups. The Tuesday is a little bit longer, a little bit hillier. And the Thursdays, you meet in Rivlin Valley. It's just a nice, nice group of people. Yeah, a little bit more chilled, I think, the th I would say the Thursday mm. one is. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really good. I like the Thursday group. Yeah. They made me laugh. <laughs> I can't keep up with the Tuesday groups if you've gone. <laughs> Let's come But anyway, yeah, so I, I get quite lonely. <laughs> yeah. Might as well go on my own. <laughs> but you know, no, that, that's a bit unfair because they do have a policy of no one gets left behind. And everybody gets unless it's after. you, and unless then, it's and me, then, then it's just different. Leave you behind. I think, that, <laughs> I think, because it's led by my wife, she just assumes I know where I'm going and I'm okay, which is fair enough. Um, it seems perfectly reasonable, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's you've yeah. got a good company on your own, right? That's yeah. I say to myself, uh, I like a nice little sing along. <laughs> uh, and then finally, we've got running past fifty on a Friday morning that use the old Don Valley Bowl, which is turned yeah. into a community park, which is yeah, really it's nice. The Olympic space. Legacy Park. Um, which is a really nice space. Um, it's literally 500 metres from the store. If you've never been down, um, I would highly recommend a trip to the Legacy Park. There is actually a kilometre loop there that is traffic free. And there are a couple of run routes from there, varying lengths that take in the Don and the Canal, uh, which a lot of people quite often put off by coming to Attercliffe because the old industry. But don't be. Um, those two routes actually are pretty phenomenal. They're really good. And we use them a lot, don't yeah, we? Yeah, and, I've, I've run a lot of laps of the ORP, it's a nice spot. Yes, and then that little kind of tiny hill in the middle of it, it's great, <laughs> isn't it? So yeah, on to the team. Oh, that's, well, yeah, what a good weekend we've just had. In fact, what a good start to the year. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, been, it's, been, it's pretty been pretty phenomenal, pretty hasn't it? So you kicked off the year, and you were at Bolsover 10k. Uh, for Round Sheffield first with Chris, I Oh, think. yeah, actually, yeah, she so, did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, more, more of me, if you... <laughs> yeah, and Mr Jones, <laughs> and um, you... I yeah, think. so it's the first time you, if you've ever done round Sheffield, it's a time stage race. So you've got breaks in between where you can chat and have a laugh and then run quite hard in between. Um, and me and Chris did it as a pair. 
Um, yeah, we had a, you, it was a good run. It was a good it? run. Yeah, it's, it's different. It's something I've never done before. I'd highly recommend it. I'd probably say do the summer one because at points we were getting quite chilly. Okay, um, was that the like hanging around between the... Yeah, yeah. It just up on the top. So you've got one that finishes at the top of Ringing Low and goes along the road. Okay. And it was just quite windy. And Do you... So when you do that, did you have do you have a set time out then, or is it is the time out up to you? Uh, you have a maximum time, so I think the longest time is about fifteen twenty minutes, and you've got okay. like a mile to get between, and then some of them are five minutes, just depending on the distance between the start and the finish. Okay, um, but you're only timed on your running. You're only timed on the running unless you overrun on the recovery, although off stages, and then you get a penalty. Okay, but yeah, no, it was a good day out. It's nice fun. We just kind how of did you guys do? Uh, yeah, we, we won and uh, set a pair course record for the winter, um, which was nice, it was good. We thought we were in quite good shape going in, so it's good to cement that. Um, still, I think we were 10 minutes behind Andy Hayes' summer time, wow. which when he's putting a minute on you on every stage is uh, quite big, but we'll move on that. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him a couple of years, we'll have another go. <laughs> it was muddy, that's, that's what I'll say. I think that's the way to look at that, then yeah. we'll have another go later. And then of course, um, we had Wilmslow, didn't we, which was initially, not Wilmslow, Bolslow, yeah. sorry, which yeah, yeah. was initially um, moved from before Christmas because of snow. And um, obviously we, we went along to that and had a look at you um, having a little run round there. And you, you started the year off quite well. Yeah, not a bad start to the year. <clears throat> um, so I set a PB, um, ran 32, 35, which is kind of nice to cement that going under 33 again just felt good throughout did it off a pretty big week of training still yeah um, didn't really taper for that one yeah and just felt felt good it was a nice run out I've had some bumps since then but it was good to get that first one in at the start of the year yes the dreaded cold bugs that have been going around <laughs> have affected everybody yeah so they've been fun haven't they and then of course this last weekend um the guys went across to uh the wilmslow running festival and they raced the 10k there which was chris Jones and more recent recruit was Paddy Wright, who's also part of Summit, and he's actually also started work at APC, as you know. Mm. And um, well, Paddy hasn't run a PB, has he, since oh, was it five, six years yeah, ago? Yeah, 2018, so six years. Yeah, and then five he years. actually his first race on the road since he's been with us, he actually uh, broke his PB, didn't he? And he's he's he's. I, He's over the moon. Yeah, yeah. On a pretty tough day. I don't know if anyone was out running this weekend. It was quite windy, to say say the least. Yeah, apparently their they're, they're running vests were blown inside out on the way back. <laughs> <sighs> I think suffice to say. Yeah. yeah. But And then Chris um, was pretty close to last year's PB. Um, 15, 20 seconds shy, wasn't he? Yeah, something Which, like that. Um, but again, he was really pleased with the, how strong he was running. And... I think actually just a good old day out for everybody and it was just good and of course talking of the wind we were Debs and I were up at Ringing Low and we were watching the efforts of the half marathon that takes us on nicely to some uh, local results we've had recently yeah and let's be honest the ladies result yeah uh, we've got to start with Philly just yeah just that, blowing that out was the water phenomenal again. wasn't it yeah she broke her own course record and when we saw it ringing, like she was just was looking so relaxed, and she'd obviously got that that first hill climb, not just in the bag, but in a place where it was really comfortable, and she just went on and won fourteen, wasn't it? One fourteen fifty, which if you've ever run Sheffield, is a pretty sweet time. Yeah, for it's, anyone, it's so. always interesting. There's always lots of arguments, isn't there? Is what that course is worth? Because whatever the uphill does, you never make up for it on the downhill. Yeah. And I always say the hardest part of that race, if you get the uphill right, isn't the uphill, it's the downhill. I'd, I'd argue it's the 500 metre section coming back out door. Ah, is that the killer? I'd that? say that's the worst bit. It's slightly uphill and everyone forgets it's there. And it just does If you yeah. tried to run that fast, bang. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And then okay. we've got Tommy Power first in the men's with Dan Howers two seconds behind and Scott Hinchcliffe in third. So I know it was all, actually all local lads in the top three, which is nice. I know it's good, but they're also pretty good results as well. Um, yeah. So Tommy was one oh eight, uh, Dan was one oh eight oh two. I know that must have been amazing at the end to have watched that. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the video. It's it's quite close. <clears throat> yeah, I mean they came neck through at Ringing Low. They were just on each other's shoulders, um, just just right there. And then obviously 
Scott, wasn't it, for third? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it we did back. wonder actually if he would pull them back because he's, he has a habit of that. Yeah. Um, in previous races, but it wasn't to be. But he he actually he's just been so consistent. Actually, Scott has the last couple of years with his results. He's doing really well. So it's good to see. It's just good to see as well the local running scene uh, from a club point of view. Just seems to be there's a sign of flourishing. I think is the best word. Yeah. And there's some really really good results. And of course, Hallamshire have got the Northern Relays coming up pretty soon and they've got to be serious contenders again yeah they've got to be i think that's uh next this saturday actually yeah i think so it'll it be is. interesting to see the results from that yeah and i think as a squad they were training together uh last night down at, at woodburn for the last session um so yeah so we'll keep our fingers eye fingers on the pulse for that one and, and see what's happening over the weekend but yeah that looks pretty exciting yeah definitely. it's just good to see just good to see and also from a at the half marathon point of view, the number of people out from the local club supporting it yeah, is it's just, incredible, isn't it? yeah I just love that yeah you've got the yellow and gold vests and um, you've got the blue and orange um, from Rivlin and the red of Hallamshire and so on and the, the blue of the city and so on it's just great it's just great and well, it, it, we're trying to work out I'm pretty certain I saw somebody at Bath Vest from down <laughs> south of Bath it's got to be a longest travel it's got to be one of them hasn't it <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. And Bath's quite hilly, but I wonder if they were prepared for that. Yeah, it's different kind of hills, isn't it? It's yeah. a bit punchier. Yeah, I wonder if they're prepared for that. But yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that was good. It was good. And then moving on nicely from road hills to off-road hills, we had the... Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans smashing the Edel skyline out the water. So Tom Evans, pro ultra runner, <laughs> dropping down significant distance. Uh, won by four minutes so for over Matlock's Joseph Oldfield and Joe Baxter. So, good result. It's a nice nice route around the top. Yeah, yeah, to say if you've not done the skyline, it's basically it's the the Great Ridge which is includes Loose Hill Mam Tour um over to Brown Hill. Um and then basically starts to finish Edel, so I've missed the start out there, haven't I? Done really well there. Yeah, you got you Yeah, got, so Kinder missed, and missed all the way worst, round to Wind Hill, the then part. Loose Hill, then Mamtor, then round to Brown Hill and then back into Edel. It's probably the best way. And all across the tops, but there's there's actually plenty of up and down in that. Um and it, it it's always interesting that uh, I think some of the those athletes based in hillier areas with big climbs sort of come and do this and it's just the, the consistency of the fact he's up down up down up down up down as opposed to up and you know long ridges yeah definitely and it does catch quite a few people out it's a different sort of training perhaps yeah or you and could nutrition argue. wise it's much harder as well because you don't have that long climb to get get food or water in it's it, the quick you're climbs. shaking your some stuff, stomach up a lot of the time yeah. which is something a bit different i mean they're pretty quick climbs i mean yeah. you're talking these guys you know from road to summit or loose hill, you know, sort of 18 minutes, if not quicker. Bear with me, I think I've got that split there if you want it. Uh, loose hill, how do we want wind hill? 18 minutes from uh, bridge at the bottom to the top of wind hill. Yeah. Which is a, if you've ever run that climb, that's pretty sharp. <clears throat> after, <throat> after running 15 miles already. Yeah, I think back in the day, I was a lot younger, I think I've managed from the bottom of the grass on the hill to the summit, summit in a little, about 1830, I think it was. Yeah, so to uh, add, the road, actually, to add the road in as well. Good going. But I couldn't have done it again. <laughs> <laughs> that I do remember. I do remember. But I, there is actually an, an unofficial record on that, that uh, road to the summit of Loose Hill. Uh, the infamous Stu Walker. Um, I'm pretty certain has broken 11 minutes on that. I think it's, I think it was broke 11, or if not, it was a low 11 minutes. Um, Bondy wasn't far behind, Stu Bond, and I think Chris Schultz has also done it in a little over 11 that I know of. It's a nice little target for us. Um, to... But yeah, there's there's one for you if you fancy a bit of a challenge. But it's the road to the summit of Loose Hill. Um, and that's going some, but yeah, Stu Walker, when he did that, I got a very nice text off him actually complimenting in me on how much he was enjoying that session because he was doing two or three, but he decided to give the first one some stick. Makes it for a pretty tough session. If you? Yeah, he was ever so complimentary afterwards. <laughs> yeah, he enjoyed that. But yeah, there you go. Nice. And then finishing the fell scenes, we've got um, quite a funny story that I had the other day. Ah. So I've been given some new shoes to test out and I thought I'll take them on a, a loop that I run quite often. It's got this lovely big 4x4 gate that you can quite easily jump over or you kind of vault over it. 
I've vaulted over it a lot of times. So it's never normally a problem. This time there was a nice, nice little muddy puddle at the bottom of the gate. Put one foot in the puddle. It didn't stay there for long, and I've got two nice big cuts just on the inside of my thighs. Which... Did one straddle the gate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it was a sore job finish... back to the car. <laughs> Did you start talking in a high pitched voice? Uh, for a little bit, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> marvellous. Oh wow! So the moral of the story is. Just jump over the gate. Just yeah. be sensible on the gates. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah. But stay closed the whole time, you know, following the country. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be good. Anyway, I hope you're all enjoying this so far because there's a lot of rambling going on here, and um, but also hopefully some pretty good news. Uh, there's also, I think, it's a good time to to actually go from racing to racing shoes because um, we've we've had a few new arrivals at the shop that we've been quite excited mm. about and you've been testing out actually a, a, a road shoe and you've been testing out an off-road shoe and I know the off-road shoe is already one of your favorites but it's a shoe with a difference um, and that's the, the the new super track Amphib and it's got the same outsole as the the beloved Scott RC as we know it, the Super Track RC, actually has the, the same midsole base, so we know what we're gonna get. But there are a couple of other important differences, aren't there, which you've you've actually come yeah. back and you've been quite positive about it. Yeah, so I was quite so, lucky. I got the first prototype of this shoe um, in the UK. Um, people don't have tiny feet like me, so that's good. Um, <laughs> but they've gone for a really light drainable upper, so it's kind of designed for obstacle course racing or running um, swim runs but also amazing for wet, boggy fell sides. So I got a pair, um, they've tweaked them a lot since then. They fit much better, but they just drain really quickly. Lightweight pair of socks, these on your feet are dry in minutes once they've got wet and they just stay light. They're a little bit heavier initially than the Super Track, but once they're both wet, these come out so much lighter. Um, Very interesting what they've done with the upper as well. Because obviously if the shoe's gonna get excessively wet, they're, they're there's a lot of vinyl overlay on there, isn't there? Which I guess is what's contributing to the weight. So what's the idea of that? Uh, it's just to add the durability. So the, yeah, I don't know if you can see between the gaps. Harry will put a close-up photo in. Um, that it's a really thin mesh. So it drains between the vinyl overlays and then obviously the vinyl's there to give it some strength and just toughness. Um, but yeah. You still yeah. feel the same as the old Scar underfoot? Yeah, yeah, like when I got them, Everyone was saying they were a bit grippier. I think they were just new. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're a really nice shoe. I've raced a lot in them. I, I mean, you know my opinion of the shoe, and I, I'm on my third or fourth pair of the old RC. I haven't obviously had to play with the Amphib. I'm not sure I'm going to go swimming, but you know, maybe it's something to think about. Um, but um, a bit of open water swimming, I haven't done that e for Even a while. still, just if you want something different to the Super Track, like the pair I've got now, the production pair, durability is the same as the Super Track. And they just look a bit different. Yeah, I really like those. You don't mind wet feet. Yeah, I also, I mean, we haven't got it here to show, but um, if you're thinking the summer version of it, the the, the Kinner Blue RC um, is well worth it. I think a, a day out in it's that's a that's a cracking shoe. I again, well, I had those on last night actually around Rivlin Valley, and no trouble, no trouble at all. So uh, let's just uh, let's just swiftly move over to something that's, that's actually had quite a lot of exciting press and. Yeah. you've had for a little while now yeah so again um, i got it a little bit ahead of time but this is the new mizuno rebellion pro their racing shoe um yeah it's just a bit out there a bit different it's meant like people have been hyping it up for a long time it's the fastest shoe i've ever tried and i've got vapor flies and sock and knees and it's also the quietest one you've tried can't hear you coming well it is camouflage so oh, that makes sense camouflage yeah. and the noise excellent <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just a bit different, slightly grippier than most super shoes. It's really responsive, it feels really light. Don't walk around in it because it feels horrible for that once you're up and running. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, I think sign selling when people try them on and buy yeah. them straight away <clears throat> because they're just so much better. Yeah, it's, I, it's quite interesting actually from my point of view um, with coaching and technique all the time. I see the carbon shoes for me. Maybe I'm a bit old school. Well, I am old. Compared to you, I'm very old. I feel old. But for me, it's very much that I see people in these carbon shoes and there is definitely a movement change and I don't think it's for the best. 
and if we come back to technique we actually then have to to change it back and what we are actually seeing the clinic is starting to see some quite interesting and unusual foot and lower limb injuries if you've um, got an extra 20 minutes in your day there's a very interesting paper published yeah. on the increased risk of navicular stress fractures um it's uh, and very is just it's above your ankle is bone it? in your foot yeah. yeah yeah for people who don't know it's a bone in your foot <laughs> yeah. which you very rarely see stress fractures in um we also actually saw um, under, I'm going to use the shoe here, but under the foot, um, between the toe and if you like foot, so there was a ligament and basically that had become part pupped and the big toe had gone out of shape and that was put down to the carbon shoe. So it, it's something I, as a coach, I'm saying that we should be using them for what they're designed for, which is for racing. And also don't just buy a pair, actually try them out and get them fitted properly and have someone look at you and, and so you understand what's going on. I was amazed that you guys have been playing in these and you for a little while longer. I, I was thinking to myself, I wonder when Harvey's gonna try his Mizunos out. And little did I realize that you changed and you were coming around the track and you had them on and the impact on your gait was negligible. And that to me was amazing. And also you weren't sounding like a herd of elephants yeah. coming round. So that, that said so many positive things. There's two or three things here that compared to a lot of shoes, the rocker is not as profound on the shoe. So you're not thrown into an unusual position. It's allowing for me, someone to actually just roll back, get the heel down a little bit better to allow that extension through calf hamstrings to get the pop. And then the plate can actually work with the foam to give that little bit more propulsive effect so if you were in the market and interested in a carbon shoe i would highly highly recommend trying these for the reasons biomechanically they're they're, they're good it's it's interesting that mizuno very late to the market were carbon shoes but they do so much research before they launch something so don't think that they're slow coaches and behind the times they're not they actually do the research on, on their product before yeah. it comes out and they do a lot, a lot of testing. And, and they look quite cool, which means you run faster. Yeah, I mean, they have been referred to as the zebra shoe, haven't they? But, um, but Zebras, famously fast. Yeah, they are, especially when chased by big cats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yes, yeah, so I have that thought in your head when you're wearing the shoe, you're certain to get a PB, I'll wear one. <laughs> um, and also the actual upper is very distinct and, and is, is part of a Japanese heritage, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's in, inspired by their artists. Yeah, um, so pretty kind cool. Kind of fit-wise, it's a bit wider than a four foot, which is quite nice for a super shoe. You don't get many that that wide. Um, but yeah, just give give them a try as well. Yeah, yeah, they're good. good. We like those. My favourite carbon shoe, um, that and the Scott. To be honest, that and the Scott. They're the two shoes I think that have less impact on the human in a negative way. So yeah. And then we they, will see. They also brought out a like racer trainer that's got a P-Bucks plate in, or it's effectively a P-Bucks plate. I think they use castor beans, if you know what that is. I had to Google it. Um, same foam and just a little bit less under your foot. I had the pair before, so before it was part of the range, and I've just done loads in them. They just feel nice, they're pretty light, really grippy on the outsole as well. So if you're on a track and it's a bit icy, which we get. Yeah, we get in the um, burn, yeah. It's, it's good, they're just nice, I, yeah. I like as a track. faster trainer they're good or you could probably use them every day as well which i wouldn't recommend but they don't feel like they're changing how you're moving and then they do the sonic or the flash i forget which ones they are which again is a more bog standard trainer um it's, it's more quite, of an everyday shoe isn't it yeah it's quite simple um it's quite responsive it's got a plate that runs under your big toe but it's still not forcing you to do anything it feels a bit like a kinvara of old um, I I've only run on the treadmill in that, and I must admit that um, it feels really good. If you if you go back with Mizuno a little while and you can remember the Elixir or the Precision, um, this for me is a shoe that harks back to that. And for those of you who perhaps don't know, a little bit younger, I can remember when Mizuno first came to the to the UK 25 years ago, 26 years ago, and they had that plate in the back of the shoe then. So this here okay i think it was originally pbex so it's, if you actually take the plate out it's really malleable and flexible and the whole purpose of it was that it would dissipate shock across more of the foam and also as it just obviously 
gave a little bit it would absorb the shock as well but Mizuno have been putting plates in their shoes for 26 years so for them this is all nothing new it's just about getting it right and how the how it how it has evolved particularly where they've been bringing in obviously newer foams um, increasing cushioning or the life of the shoe that they've just changed the design of the plate to actually work better with those foams and it just makes total sense so if you're looking for an everyday shoe that's nicely cushioned um, and perhaps a little bit more responsive as opposed to lots under your foot then I is it yeah. 120 pound 130 120 120 so. I, it's just Perfect. In today's it's market, great. that's a great, great. It's actually bargain. a great price. Yeah, haven't things got up? <clears throat> excuse me, gone up a lot lately. But yeah, we, we, I, yeah, I really like that. It's a cracking shoe. It's really good. Um, for me, probably of the three, for the vast majority of us, that's the, that's just such a good balance of everything. It's a cracking shoe. Yeah. And then finally, new into store, the Surfer. I think for all of us, it's probably not our go-to. But we've already sold a few of them. People are loving them. Yeah, it's it, 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 not not the shoe it was before. So if you've had the old Surfer, definitely give it a try before you buy it. Um, oh, it's completely different. Yeah, absolutely. It's a new shoe, basically, with an old name. Uh -huh. um, so it's, it, it is. For a start, the the way they've we've obviously got rid of the clouds and the traditional, if you like, what looked like pieces of hose pipe stuck to a bottom of a shoe, and it's a lot lot more squidgy. I think is the best way of putting it if I can squeeze that and show it great for audio listeners so yeah I know <laughs> doing really well here um hey we're learning as we go it's fine it's good so we're gonna be fine Harry's gonna edit it later yeah, apparently yeah. and all and all the all the bad spots are just yeah. gonna get rid of so we should get a, picture a minute of, a minute left Harry's behind the camera we should get a picture of him later <laughs> yeah. all six or eight of him so he's a little lad well seven and a half because he's it goes on about how big his feet are. Oh, there is that as well. Size 15 or something. <laughs> anyway, um, just give him the shoe boxes. He'll be fine. Um, <laughs> thank goodness we can get shoes to fit him. Um, but yes, so it, it, it does. It's an interesting one, this, because on always produce firm, responsive shoes. And at one point, we, it was like it was the go-to shoe. We couldn't get enough. And they followed this trend of starting to make the shoe softer, which is an interesting debate. Not for today. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Soft shoes. We haven't got time, have Not we? Not for today. <laughs> no, soft shoes. Mm. Um, but um, Andy Shelton, who loves on, has got a pair, and he says they're really nice. So if you like on, come give them a try. That's all I'll say on it. Okay. All right, then I'll shut up. Uh, I'm very old school. Save the debate for now. <laughs> <laughs> soft versus firm what's better there's a good topic for another week isn't it that's what you're saying to yeah me. so i shall put this down so apparently we just cut out you just can't get the staff these days can you no i tell it's you it's terrible well, it's awful isn't it <laughs> anyway <laughs> another new thing is uh patagonia oh. have just released uh, Poor harry <laughs> yeah i know he's getting all the stick today yeah. um released these new capoline cool tops uh you've got one or two patagonia tops one or two yeah. i really really like patagonia and and this is the ladies this, um, this one's the men's just... um, so i've got mine's ink blue well the ladies is ink blue and the lady and the blokes is um it's like an off red yeah it's... kind of orangey yeah uh, i'd say wednesday fans could still wear it kind of red if that means anything uh, wednesday playing blue so you know yeah so they, they might wear it. oh they might wear know, it, i was yeah. saying you know you get people <laughs> Football reference. Yeah, I think we're in so much trouble. Yeah, there. I'll stop I talking. I'm just... getting a dodgy look yeah. from behind the camera. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, really nice. You can probably explain a little bit more on the, the fabrics and stuff. Yeah, you so it, um, they use for this particular top, but it's very commonplace for Patagonia to use a fabric, um, the capoline, which is a microfiber. It's something like as well 68% recycled content. Oh, that, that's their entire range this year this yeah 68. pretty much everything I, I think some of their their range is also 100 mm, percent. so yeah. it, it will vary depending on i guess the technical nature of what they're doing um so they still want to make kit that works and the, as you're probably aware very environmental business and all their, their profits actually do go into environmental causes campaigning and I think you found out something about there's a European yeah, river. Yeah, there's a, a river in Eastern Europe, which they've been campaigning for a while because uh, I followed it when it first popped up. Um, 
that they've now turned into a national park because it was at risk of getting polluted. Um, so they've managed to move factories from away from the river and kind of- And this has all been campaigning. This has all been campaigning. By, it's all, driven by all the money's gone in from Patagonia. I think the government, I can't remember the country, the government was quite corrupt at the time. So they've helped with trying to sort that out as well. It's insane. If you, it's on Patagonia's website. I well, we could actually underneath put that link. Yeah. Like, like, people may be interested in reading that. Yeah, so. I mean, the photos from the place are just stunning. I had no idea that it was this incredible. Yeah. Uh, well, they've actually, Patagonia do all sorts of things. I mean, they've been given 1% for the planet. They've been doing stuff in Wales as well mm. um, in the past. Um, with hydroelectricity and what's been happening with that and, and ensuring rivers were preserved and as opposed to just being dammed, which obviously we know can be quite negative. So they've done lots of campaign even in the UK. Um, but yeah, they do so much and all of their profit obviously just yeah, keeps going think, into the right like places. Warmware, like Stuart, a pair of shorts that he split. Um, you can't oh, tell that it's, it's been repaired. It's, yeah, it's, it's just insane. insane. They were like eight years old. Yeah, so it's, it's worth spend a little bit more now and they'll look after yeah. you. There. But these sort of things, like I said, the capillin fiber microfiber is quick drying, um, it wicks, and some of their, their tops that they make as base layers using the capillin fabric, you can basically, you can wear all year as well. You don't just buy it as a base layer for the winter, you can wear it as a summer tea. They're, they're just so effective and versatile. And that's part of their, their plan is that you buy something and you just keep wearing it for so long. So they tend to use, from a color point of view, um, things that we can wear all year and also just stand the test of time yeah which is is amazing the other thing as well they'll only make to order um, part of that is for social and also for commercial reasons at a factory level so it ensures proper payment of workers and it also stops the hiring and firing system of demand no demand factories know what they're doing yeah. Um, and they, they can plan accordingly. And Patagonia are always striving for that. And in certain areas as well, they'll even build a school on the side of the factory so that the workers have actually got somewhere for the kids to go while they're at work. Yeah. And, and obviously education and so on and so forth. So there's just have a look at the website. There's just so much stuff on there that you can read about that they do. If that's not a reason to buy a T-shirt to help someone go to school, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think Patagonia want you to buy a T-shirt no, for that reason. That's, no, that's what I'm hearing between the uh, lines. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting that <laughs> worldwide, they're one of the biggest growing brands and they don't advertise their product. Yeah. yeah. They advertise the impact of buying their product. And that's quite, oh, the signs fell down. And that's quite amazing, so. And then finally, we've got some, some cool new glasses. Oh yeah, 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 these are, these are quite good, aren't they? The so, I don't know about you, but I look pretty good in your reflection. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. But I think that wraps it up for this week, really. Unless yeah, you've got anything I could else knock to say. around sunglasses. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like these. And from our point of view, we've, we, we're the Sheffield distributor, so they're just down the road. And so we quite like the fact that, from our point of view, they're going to be doing less miles. Yeah, well, I, I put them up on the way to work this morning. Yeah, you did indeed. So, yeah, um, absolutely brand spanking new. And they stay on your face. Yeah. Well, your face fell off, but the yeah. glasses are still there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It must be something to do with that gate. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, how much are they? Uh, 30 pounds a pair, which for a sunglass that feels nice, it's got rubberized like nose so it doesn't slip around. I think, I think they're UV Nicely rated. Nicely hinged as well. They're just a good Yeah, sunglass. they are UV rated. And also I think that the um, lens is also safety rated is, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's category three lens, if you know what that means. Yeah, I think that's for the light, so that's, that's strong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think they're also safety rated so they don't shatter. I'm not, not sure on that one. Fairly we'll certain that's you. the case. Fairly certain that's the case. But yeah, we quite like these, don't we? And there's some cool colours coming around. We've got some blues and blacks and or oranges. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, it's fancy. so yeah, so, and I think there's going to be a thing going on over Easter with these, isn't there? Just mm. to, to get them going. Yeah, I think if you get two pairs, they one's 20% off, which is quite nice. Ooh. So, yeah. His and hers. Or his and his, if you want to. Yeah, or and hers, or whatever you want to do, really, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, dead good, dead good. So yeah, I think that wraps us up for first ever episode. Hopefully someone's out there listening. Hi, Mum. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> don't think my mum will. No. I'm far too old for this malarkey. <laughs> Do you want it like? Mention YouTube that we don't just say, what? <laughs> Um, but hey, we could give it a go. Yeah, why not? So if you've got any comments, if they're nice, leave them down below. Yeah, um, if they're not so nice, we really don't want to know because yeah. we're quite sensitive souls. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you've got any feedback, any topics you want us to cover in the future, just let us know. Um, yeah, we are, we are going to be looking at some of the hot debated things, um, like should we have soft hard cushioning? Um, we're also going to be looking at some, some of the training we do with the team and some of the approaches we take. And we're going to get some special guests on. Yes, so. we are. T we haven't actually asked anybody. Are, we haven't asked anybody yet. We could throw names out there. I definitely think Doc Kesterton. Yeah, I, get I'd say in. Debbie Smith. Yeah, well, actually, yes, because I don't think people realise what she's done no. in her running career. No, she's a very, sporting career. Very she's quiet about it. Quite quiet, isn't she? And, uh, uh, her, her training for Tour de Mont Blanc was interesting. Well, I'd see, I, I knew she's done it. I don't know the training. She keeps that very quiet. Yeah, she, she never mentions it, really. So I think she may have spent more time running downhill than up, which is interesting. Sensible. Yeah, which is interesting. Your quads can get quite tired. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so I actually also would like to bring some folk in from our community as well. And uh, I definitely think Leanne and Hazel should have a moment talking about what's happening at Woodrun. Yeah, yeah, that's um, Because that's just flourishing. Um, but, yeah, definitely. I also think some of the old hats... Uh, he won't mind me they won't mind me saying this sort of get mr bond in yeah he's always got something good to say from just fall back we can talk wine yeah yeah that works yeah could always talk vinyl records i could talk about that for a little bit if you that's want a separate no? podcast again. Yeah, okay yeah unless you want to pick track of the week now in three two one. Oh well in that case it's got to be breathe dark side of the moon because it's 50th anniversary there we go so there you go podcast done yeah nice one yeah thanks very much folks see you soon <laughs>